Hi Copic in the craft room, Miss Michelle Houghton here. I have a stamp from Crafting Kimmy. This one is by Sabrina. And these stamps came out in a mini retreat a few months back, but they are now being released as part of the March release at Crafting Kimmy. And this particular set is all knights and dragons, which I love, super fun. One of the things about this particular image is that Sabrina designed it specifically that if you wanted to change the hair on the figure, you could turn it into more feminine versus the shorter hair like this that looks a little more masculine. Now, I wanna give you a little heads up on how this works for a lot of artists. I, have, I actually work with Sabrina a little bit because I'm on the design team. And so I reached out to her and asked her permission to change the hair and I'm going to obviously show you how to do that today um, but there are a lot of stamp artists out there that specifically in their policies and their copyright angel policies would say that you're not allowed to do that to their images so I want to give you that heads up I'm doing this to the stamp with specific um, permission to do this to the stamp and Sabrina specifically would verbalize that she designed the stamp to allow you to do that. Um, but if you're looking at changing a different image and adapting it, you want to double check with the policy of that company or that artist to make sure that that is acceptable to them. And in particular, or more specifically, if you're going to then put it online somewhere in a video like this in um, on your blog, on Instagram, on Facebook. If you're sharing the information about the image and your artwork, you need to double check if you're gonna be changing the image. I hope that makes sense. If you've got questions, obviously just ask those in the comment section below. But that's just an important piece um, about working with someone else's art, which if you're working with stamps, that is what you're doing. So I'm gonna enlarge this little guy, get closer, and we are gonna add some longer hair. So one of the other images in the set is this little gal who's a knight and she has a long braid. So I thought it'd be really fun to see if we can't turn this into her braid kind of flopping out behind her. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this to kind of almost like a tie. So I'm gonna go from the edges in and then a braid is a pretty simple, it has, it kind of weaves in and out on itself. And then it's gonna come to another tie, but I'm thinking I'd really rather it kind of reach back this direction. So, I'm going to change that direction of that initial. I can take this out and up just a little bit. There we go. So I've just changed the direction of where that's going. And what I'll do, I'm going to do this little braid for her and then let's enlarge this so you guys can see just this little braid piece. It's kind of like almost like an interlocking. We're gonna come down to a tie and she'll have that little piece at the end. I'm thinking. Now, when if you were doing this, you wanna keep all of those pencil lines super light because you're gonna to wanna to be able to cover them up with Copic or erase them to the point that you can barely see them so that you really don't end up seeing 
those pencil lines. So. All right, so there's her little braid, and we'll do some coloring here in a second. So a braid, and let me zoom back out here a little bit, and I'll sketch on here, and then we'll find a clean piece. So remember a braid, if you've ever braided hair, is three pieces. So think of it in terms of we've got one piece that works its way around, and it's folding into another piece, right? Which is folding into another piece. So as I'm doing this, I'm just kind of playing from side to side. So this piece comes out from underneath and folds back underneath the next piece. So you can see how this one kind of continues through. This one would come around and continue through next. You see how that one continues through here. This one's continuing through there. And this is, <laughs> right? This is another one. So they're weaving together, and that's kind of what you end up with. Do this for you. So this is kind of what that braid looks like in a really big version of it, but that's what's happening. And so that's, and what you see on a lot of these images is it kind of closes into this nice kind of curved where it comes to that tight point where it tucks in. Right? All right. So this is what I'm aiming for. And um, this is a very, very tiny, teeny tiny version of that. So we won't necessarily get this full effect, but that's what we're going for. And I think sometimes it's helpful to see that bigger version of that so you can see what we're trying to do. All right, get her all in there. Starting back with some clean paper and we'll do some coloring. So my dragon is going to be a green dragon uh, yes, I'm going back and forth. I'm wavering. I'm trying to keep my color choices down to kind of a minimum. And normally I do skin and hair first, but in this case, I'm going to do the dragon, maybe even do her clothing, then I'll do her skin and hair. All right. So I am actually going to do, um, let's see. Use my two lighter colors on my dragon. YG93 is kind of my midtone, so I'm going to create some shape on this guy first. I'm actually starting with the darker of the two. I want to make sure he's got this nice round shape to his face. His cheeks are kind of puffed up. They're flying through the sky, so I'm gonna assume they're upright at least. So he's gonna have darker coming from the underneath up towards the top, which would be catching light. He is a combination of cylinders and spheres 
let's see. I guess this is a dragon back there as well. So we kind of go along the length of him, except for his head, which is that sphere. And that's where we see more the kind of rounded, creating that three-dimensional sphere shape. And then he's got all of these beautiful kind of web, kind of bone structure for his wings. And those will all be cylinders as well. So we're going to hit one edge. Those are so narrow. It'd be really hard to get dark more than one side. So we'll kind of keep it along one side. We could probably go underneath the girl's arm and hand. There we go. And then I'm going to fill in most of the rest of the dragon with this lighter YG91. Let's see, where can I put this that's going to be out of the way of my hand, but that you can see it? Let's see if that works. We'll see. I am going to use a different color on the kind of webbing on the wings. I'm thinking kind of a complementary opposing color for that and also all of the kind of scale are more like horns and ridges. This is a funny color group in that most of the YGs blend really well, but this one all the way at the very kind of desaturated end, the one that has all this gray added, the YG9s, this one tends to be a little bit harder to blend. It's not as easily blending, just kind of an FYI. And there's no magic of, well, if this one has, if it has this kind of saturation or if it has this kind of colorant in it, at least I don't have that magic key to know. I just have to try them. But I'm being reminded as I color this image that these don't always play quite as nicely together. Okay, so that was YG91. I'm going to use a little bit of YG95 and I'm going to come in and I'm going to hit a couple spots because I do want to kind of really emphasize some of this shape. So I'm not going to go many spots, but I want to push a few of these little places back. And then I'm going to add some texture. Sorry, this is a YG95. Definitely hit that back arm so it gets a little further away. And this space kind of underneath our writer. There we go. Push that hind leg back a little bit as well. Hit that right, right away with my YG93. And I think this is going to be, it's not going to be perfectly smooth, but because I'm going to come in and add that texture, it might be enough. I might not need 
to hit it a second time with the YG91. I'm already liking the more defined shape that that third layer of color is giving us. Okay, so then two things. We're going to go back to the YG95, and this one we're going to start with dots in the darker area and come up a little bit into the lighter area. Because this image is small, I'm keeping my dots pretty small. Um, kind of up to you. But I'm going to try to keep them pretty tight. And I don't necessarily, especially with this color, I don't know that I need to come all the way up. I'll do another couple layers with texture. So this one's going to stay mostly in that dark to kind of mid-tone range. If you want to do some of that lighter area, kind of hang in there, and we're going to do some of that too. So if you want to keep that texture going, we'll get there. But we need to switch colors for that, so just a second. Okay, so that's kind of... Let's do a few right across this little snout. There we go. I'm going to do one more YG93. This is my second layer of texture, this time with the mid-tone that I used on the dragon. And this can go up into the light, so if you really want him to be speckly, kind of scaly looking. Now, notice I am coming all the way back into the dark and then extending these out into that lighter area. This is one of the main reasons I'm doing the dragon first is that if I bump into the cape and the our dragon rider, it's going to be okay because I know I still need to color her. So when I'm doing a really extensive texture like this, oftentimes I will try to get it done first. So getting all the way around. And two reasons why I'm starting down in this darker area. Number one is it adds another layer of texture, but number two, it's actually softening those darker dots. And then my last step is going to be to soften them even more. So I'm gonna come in with my colorless blender and I'm gonna slow my pin down a little bit. Now these dots are pretty small that I did with my yellow greens. So I'm going to try to keep my dots with my colorless blender small as well. So even though I'm holding the marker for a few seconds, I'm just holding that little tiny tip. And my colorless blenders, I have more than one because I use them so often. I think at least two of them need new nibs. These have gotten so smushy because of what I do with them, but they definitely could use a refresher. So they're not ruined. Um, they still work. The alcohol solution colorless blender still flows out of them just fine, but this has gotten so soft and a little bit curved. I'd like it to be a little bouncier kind of the best description but have more of a tip to it as well it's kind of lost that effect so the fun part about texture to me of doing a texture like this is you can 
you can play with this for a while. You can decide this is too much texture. I want to smooth that out a little bit. This is not enough. I'm going to go back and add more. This is everything about your personal choice and the look you would like to achieve. So I'm actually pretty happy with him. I'm going to leave the um, texture off of this kind of bone structure on the wings, but I might go in. I'm going to try this. I'm going to go in and just lightly brush through that highlight. And my guess is it's going to pop that color just a little bit more. Brighten up that highlight. And make that stand out. Yeah. So I'm going to leave that that way. So those were a series of YG9s. Then I'm going to go through and hit the wings. And I'm going to hit... Um, the horns and these kind of scales and even the little nails and I'm going to do that with a series of YRs um, to do a true like complementary color it actually would be a red but I'm thinking I like this variation instead and I'm going to use this on something else too so this is a YR24 I actually really like this series of YRs. Um, has a little bit of kind of a more earthy feel. It's not a real bright brassy orange. So it's it's a favorite of mine. So again, I am actually kind of going in reverse. I'm using my little bit darker color first. And I'm really, I'm probably only going to use the two, two colors. So I'm going into the edge because I think it's going to dip. It tucks in because it's tucking into that structure. But then where this, where the wing piece kind of pulls back in, it might dip a little bit. So again, you can completely play with this and have the, viewer seeing it kind of the way you want to see it. Or you want them to see it, however you want to say that. So we're adding a little more detail to these today than I normally would. This is YR21. just going from that white area and pushing into that darker color depending on how long this takes you you might have to um, go all the way into that dark area so you don't have a watermark or a wet kind of line where the wet meets the dry so kind of keep an eye on that if it looks like it's kind of stopping short and just creating an edge, just go all the way to into that black line, all the way over that YR24. Once I get all of these done, then I'm going to kind of sit back and take a look and see if that's really the look I want. I'm not really sure about this addition of that kind of inner piece. Eh. I think I'll hit it one more time, lighten it a little bit further. I like where it gets dark at the kind of right at the structure of the wing, but I'm not sure I like it in the middle. So take some of that back out. This is that YR24 again. This is now super wet. 
So if I'm really good about my light flicking motion, I'm not gonna have to do any more blending. I can take this and flick it across that wet ink and it's gonna blend for me even better. There we go. Yep, like that better. All right, and then you can see which one was dry. That one. I'm gonna use the darker of the two, YR24, and I'm gonna hit all of these little scales and the horns. So. The horns are kind of a cone shape. So I'm trying to come along and showcase that a little bit with how I'm kind of coming up the edge, leaving that kind of cone shape highlight. Same YR24, I'm just gonna fill in. You see these one little group of kind of talons. Horns. Horns. Here we go. My eyes are got one contact that's not cooperating today, so I think I missed the tip of his tail. All right, on to our little girl. I think she is wearing a blue cape. I'm pretty sure she's gonna have silver armor, and then we can have fun. I'm gonna do her hair kind of in that reddish gold color like the dragon. So moving on to the skin tone as well. She doesn't have a whole lot of skin showing, so we're gonna keep this really, really simple. I'm actually gonna use, let's see, I'm changing my mind kind of mid, midstream here. Let's try, no. Sorry. We're gonna do some E50. And you can decide if she's wearing a glove or not. Um, I'm gonna say a glove because she's holding on to a dragon. I think she might need them. And then I've got an E21. Coming in from the side of her face, she has a spear for a head as well. And then I'm gonna give her the hint of a nose. Because I think most people should have a nose. There we go. We can keep her really, really simple. Smooth that out a little bit with my E50. So that was E50 and E21. Okay. Two colors are gonna finish off her face. She is really wet, so I'm gonna take E93 and just barely Touch it, kind of pounce it a little bit onto those cheeks. Give her a hint of a blush and not so much makeup, but the wind running past all that, all her skin. Got her rosy cheeks. And then I'm gonna do one other thing. I'm gonna use E04 to fill in her mouth. So if I'm worried about it being wet, I probably should do this later, but I'm gonna go ahead and risk it. Just barely touch that in now. All right, cape 
and armor. Let's do the cape first. That'll be fun. B23 is going to come in and hit the folds where it's dipping down away from the viewer. And then B21 is going to fill that in and soften the edges of the B23. Now, the blue and the yellow red, or the orange, are um, complementary colors, so opposite on the color wheel. So they are going to pop against each other. And so that color choice is very purpose purposeful on my part. I wanted to have that in there. I'm going to use the darker of the two, the B23, to do a couple other things. She's got these small details on her armor, and I'm adding one at, one at her ankle. Um, to break that up so we don't lose the fact that it's probably in pieces that she puts on. And then I am going to use some cool grays. I've got a C3. I'm going to fill her armor in. Her chain mail. And then we can kind of treat her armor similar to how we did the dragon. So what I'm going to do, because remember it, a chain mail is kind of that, those little tiny links all linked together. So to me it would look almost like all of that dragon scale. So I'm going to use a C5 and I'm going to come in and I'm going to dot Kind of coming from the bottom edge, where I think it would be darker. Again, she's going to catch light as the sun comes down on top of them. And then I can do the same thing with this image or with the chain mail that I did on the dragon scales so that I can take my colorless blender and again, slowing down. And I want to keep that those little dots very, very tiny. I mean, this is a whole per person, and what is that, an in maybe two inches, inch and a half? So tiny person, so that chain mail is teeny, teeny, tiny. It wouldn't even be as big as what I'm doing here, but we're giving it that sense of texture. All right. Then one last decision before we color that hair in, and I probably should have done this first. I have not done this image as a no line image, but if I start coloring the hair and color out the braid, as of right now, that braid is going to be no line out in the braid itself. Um, so if I want it to look like the rest of the image, I'm going to have to add that black line back in. So the easiest way to do that is to go ahead and grab a multi liner and the smarter choice would have been to do it first so that it has time to dry while I'm doing all the other coloring, but I did not do that. So this is a 0.3 multi-liner, Copic multi-liner. And I know I can color with my Copics over the top of this. And so that's why I do it, use this. The 0.3, I think for a lot of people is a good width the point three describes how wide that little tip is. 
and it's a little bit stronger so if you tend to be a person who presses pretty hard this is going to work pretty well for you um, you can use one that has a little bit more of a, um, a finer tip but I also want it to look about the same width as the line of the stamps now this is probably a touch smaller but not a whole lot so you can you can debate that one either way I'm going to add a couple little pieces to that little tail out here because we've got them in here and I'm going to add a couple little flicks coming back into the braid because I feel like that's going to make it more complete, like it's all truly going with the stamped image itself. So. Normally you would need to do that first, let this dry, um, th then it would be a good time after it's dry to come back in and really erase those pencil lines if you've got any left over. I'm going to do this really carefully. Now if I smudge this, I told you this is what not to do because this could easily smudge. I'm really pushing the issue here. Copic Multiliner is completely compatible with Copic, but it is black ink. It will smear if you push on it while it is wet. <laughs> but you know me. You guys have, most of you have watched long enough to know that I push the issue on more than one occasion. Okay, hair. So I'm kind of thinking it'd be fun to have some similar colors to what's in here however I don't want it exact so I'm gonna go find one of one of my two favorite kind of redhead base colors which is YR30 and YR31 I'm gonna choose the lighter of the two YR30 and this is what that base color is going to be now this is super light, which means it has a ton of alcohol in it. So again, even more so now, I am playing with fire a little bit in that scrubbing over the top of this Copic Multiliner right now. I could very easily uh, do some smearing. So I'm going to be kind of careful and try to go in more on each section. Didn't do too bad. Okay. I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not gonna keep testing that with fire here um, so then I am gonna do YR21 which is what we used on the little wings Let's see can we still see all of her yes so hair we start at where the hair starts and flick back we want to go in the direction that the hair is going and then when there's a joint like where it comes into that braid we can flick back in the opposite direction so depends on how detailed you want to get on the braid but you literally can go from one corner and the other on each of these sections on her little tail piece I'm gonna come out and then I'm not going to come back in because a lot of times those little fringes will stay lighter. YR24 was next in that series. So again, fewer flicks this time. So just not as many. They're still going to come out just as far. Different lengths. There just won't be as many flicks this time. I'm going to say this front part is almost like her little bangs. And then I'm going to kind of be careful as I run my way down the braid. So what I'm hitting is those little corners. That's because that's where that hair is coming out from under the other chunk of hair. So it gets darker where it pulls in. 
into those little spots. So a couple options here. I could continue up the YR. There's a YR27. Or one of my favorite things to do with kind of reddish hair is actually switch over to an earth tone. So this is an E99, um, which I really, again, it's another color I, you'll see me use on redheads to kind of finish off. And it's going to give her a little bit of a feel of an auburn because it adds in that earth tone. And it kind of, to me, it makes it less brassy, less orange. And it really softens, but it still has that beautiful kind of red undertone to it. All right. Two things. I'm going to skip the YR24, but I am going to go back to the YR21 and I'm going to start in the dark area and flick into some of these lighter areas really lightly. It's going to soften all of those dark strokes so I don't really see flicks anymore. And then the last thing I'm going to do is take my YR30 onto a few of these little bright highlights and kind of go from that highlight into that mid-tone and dark. And it's just going to, again, kind of smooth that out just a little bit. So there we go. I love these little blue details. So I am going to come back with one of my blues. <laughs> Something that probably only I will see, but I love it. So there we go. So I will either do kind of a nice kind of sky background behind her. I'm not sure what the card's going to look like yet. So I will either put kind of a sky with some clouds or I will fussy cut her out and get her on a card. But I'll make sure to include the card so you guys can see it. But I hope this was helpful and kind of a fun variation and something you can do with stamps. I would just encourage you to check with the artist and a lot of times you don't have to talk to the artist. A lot of times you can look on their website and find out what their policy is about when you're using their stamps if you're allowed to make changes like this. All right. Thanks everybody. You guys have a happy colorful day.